Hi and welcome along to Emirates Old Trafford with me Paul Allett for another edition of Beyond the Boundary. Uh, this week I'm delighted to say that we have got the Managing Director of England Men's Cricket uh, with us in the studio. It's a very warm welcome to Rob Key. Rob, great to see you. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever see you in this role, to be perfectly <laughs> honest, having worked with you uh, in various locations around the country uh, commentating for Sky. But here you are, uh, and I must say that now we're into July, you've had a, a very interesting and successful start to your career, as uh, or your new career. What was it that finally uh, made you take the role? I did, well... You didn't think I'd do this. If you'd have asked me this at Christmas time, I'd have thought, what are you talking about? There's no chance I'd be on the other side of the fence being an administrator. I mean, I love doing the job I had for Sky. I never thought in a million years. The only reason I thought I wouldn't be doing that is if I'd got sacked, to be honest, or I'd done something or whatever had happened. So it was sort of after the ashes. And, and you know, it's like we used to do it all the time. And you're always sitting around because we love cricket. Mm. And you always, we'd be in the back of the commentary box and be trying to work out, you know, oh, what would you do? You do this, or why don't we do this? Or why don't they do that? And then it was sort of Strauss, he'd asked me if I would be interested in the role. And I sort of thought, yeah, I suppose so. But never really thought that anything would come of it. But the thing that I suppose was the defining factor in it all was that now I feel like you've got some skin in the game. Now I feel, when you're in TV, you're coming up with a lot of ideas, but really, you, you might never know if they work or not. And you, you're never really sort of under pressure in that regard to see if your views have any meaning or if they're, if they're right. And what I felt was is that on this side of the fence, you, you then, you're going to be tested, it's going to be a challenge, but also you've got a chance to do some good for English cricket. And I suppose that was the overriding factor, really. It was just to see if I could do any good in the game, if I could actually help out on that side of it. Was there a deep breath moment or a gulp when you actually realised, hmm, I am actually doing this job now, so now I've got to really perform and I've got to put those thoughts that I have into action, into practice? I think when I was on the train that first day, because, you know, working on, in TV again, you, there's a lot of time you're very, very busy. There's a lot of time when you're off as well. And then all of a sudden I thought, hang up, I'm going to be sort of flat out now. And I was on the train from Canterbury or Ashford to London on that first day, just after Easter. And I'd sort of said to Tom Harrison, yeah, I'll do it. I'll start on Tuesday. That was the Thursday I said I'd do it. So four or five days later, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing this now. And then you sort of go into Lords and you're getting, right, this is how it all works. And there was no one really in because either they're hybrid working or people are on leave for Easter. And I remember thinking, do you know what? I've no idea what this job actually is. But the greatest thing, I suppose, is the, the position that England are in where Ashley Giles, uh, Chris Silverwood, Graham Thorpe were no longer there. There was no national selector. So it was very clear, actually. It didn't really matter. All the administrative side of stuff I didn't have to worry about at that point mm. because I had to find coaches, find a captain, and then still we're looking for a selector, but I'll get round to that. So there was a very sort of clear focus on what I had to do. So it wasn't too bad. No, and the best point, I suppose, or perhaps the worst point, depends how you look at it, was that you were starting, as you've said, with a clean slate, but you were starting with England at a very low position in red ball cricket because they'd had a, a horrendous winter, as you've said, lost... Uh, the higher ranking individuals either uh, had been removed before you came along uh, and you had no captain. So from, from your point of view, the only way is up. Well, and that, and that was the same actually in, when we we're interviewing coaches because what we didn't do was say, right, we think you're going to be white ball, you're going to be red ball. We just sort of asked the field, you know, and, we, and, the, and people obviously applied for the job. As, and so... Well, sorry for interrupting, but you say that now because it's pretty self-evident that that that's but did you really truly and honestly go in with a completely open mind and we'll talk specifically about Brendan McCullum because he had no pedigree as a red ball coach he didn't have much pedigree as a coach he'd coached in in t20 franchises so you say that now but really did you did you honestly think I'm going to walk out of this room and Brendan McCullum's going to be my red ball 
coach? Well, very early on, I thought that Brendan McCullum was the, one of the front runners for me. Mm. You know, forget about what everyone else thought. Mm. I always thought Brendan McCullum, but even before I was doing this job, I thought when I, and I knew him a little bit, not a lot, actually. We'd done a bit of commentary together. And I'd watch and I'd listen to the Cowdery lecture and I'd watch what New Zealand did. And all you ever really want, I think, in anything, is you want people who are aligned to your philosophy and the way you think and the way that you think the game should be played. And I was very clear on that, and that's what I wanted. And, and then you sit down and you interview, and there's loads of interviews we did with lots of different people, and you sort of work out who's most attuned to what you think. Because if you don't have that alignment in anything, then there's real trouble. I think that's where problems come. If you have a coach and captain who aren't aligned, if you have a managing director who's not aligned, if there's someone who has a different way of doing things, and that doesn't mean you can't challenge each other and have, you know, have disagreements. That's not it at all. But your basic philosophy is the same. And that's what Brendan McCullum had. I had two choices. I, I saw it. I either had the, the England team in test cricket needed someone who was going to be really tough on them, really hard, be like a drill sergeant, who was going to give no quarter. Or they needed someone who was going to try and take the pressure off and try and get the best out of them in that way. Not be by being soft on them. Because actually, Brendan McCullum takes no quarter at all. If there's anything that he's not happy with, then he's going to make sure he will, will pull those people up on it. But it was about how do you get the best out of these people, and that was my view. And that's when you spoke when I spoke with Brendan. That's exactly how he saw it as well. And that was my sort of theory. I felt that England cricketers had had a lot of people, and this is our culture, telling them what you can't do. Oh, I'll oh, be careful of this. Don't do that. Oh, you can't do that. The problem is that's not particularly inspiring. And Brendan McCullum is the opposite of that. He sort of tries to broaden your horizons to what you can do. So you had this, this debonair, dashing blueprint whirring around in your mind, thinking, this is really the way I want English red ball cricket to go. And Brendan McCullum was the man that sparked that for you? Or yeah, did you spark it, it and, was... see, and see him as being the ideal... Well, he can't be a catalyst, but, but innovator, if you like. Well, yeah, he, he's the one. It, it, and it, the only thing I would say, and that's why I, <clears throat> both of us, Brendan and myself, we're not, it's not I'm against it at all, but we don't use the Baz Ball comment because what it's not to me, you said it there, it is not about just playing shots and being aggressive. It's actually how do you get seriously talented cricketers to make the most? You just get out of their way a little bit and you try and free them up in a world now where there are so many people telling you what you can't do, whether that's in whatever you do, whether you're in politics or anything, and it's in our culture a bit, where I found it actually really fascinating. So we played against New Zealand in, in, a, in a manner, in a style, which actually Joe Root wasn't slogging. Johnny Bairstow people, they, they haven't been slogging in that regard. You could have lost a couple of those games just as easily as you've ended up winning them. Absolutely. Let's be realistic about it. Absolutely. But it's not about just going out there and being no. ultra aggressive. And what I found really interesting was that, so we won against New Zealand and then straight away I was like, yeah, but that won't work against India. And it won't work against... Who you was know, telling you that? No, no, in the media. You yeah, saw sorry. Reed and everything, you yeah. know. And that, but that's what I think we do. That's they're what I get do. Their, they're going to get their comeuppance. It's all going all to go wrong. Which, there's every chance that that might happen. But why are we getting so far ahead of ourselves? Mm -hmm. Let's concentrate and focus on what we can control now, today. Which is very much Brendan and Stokes' thing. It's like, let's go out and entertain people today. Not worry about the future. And it's the same thing. You know, we've got our plans in mind. And there's a hell of a lot of thought that goes into what these guys have done. And it's the same thing. You know, and then it's like, we beat India. And it's like, now, well, it's yeah, but this won't work against yeah. Australia. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like, no, okay, it might not. But we're not, that's not an inspiring message to give. That's fine for everyone else to be talking about that. But in our dressing room, we've got to be talking about what people can do, what you, how you can succeed, what is possible, not living in this world that we do a bit of, oh, uh, yeah, but you can't do this. Yeah, but you can't hit on the up. You can't do that to so-and-so. It's like, all right, guys, yeah, we know that. Excuse the pun, then. <laughs> what is the key to exploring this self-expression for the players? Because it's the same players that were played through the winter in a completely different environment, obviously, but they've been allowed to come out and express themselves. How have you managed to turn that 
Well, I, the, what I would say is that, that that's my theory. How Brendan and Stokesy have done it really is the key. And, and it's little things. It's how do you give people confidence? The game, as you know, as everyone who's played any sport knows, we're different players when we're confident. You know, look at the white ball side here. We've had a tough time against tough, t tough, tough oppositions. You know, but they're just lacking that little bit of confidence. But that will come back, and they'll fly again because there's some seriously good players in that. And it's, I watched like so. It's the language and the terminology that's used in the dressing room from them. It's not a negative. You know, all oh, be careful of this. Watch out for that. Don't do this on here. And and it's little things really, like Alex Lees, for example, who had played fairly in a stodgy manner in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and he got 20 odd in the second innings at Lords and Joe Root had played brilliantly Joe Root had won the game with a fantastic hundred you know and a game that was in the balance and Ben Folks had played really well so it's obvious that those guys had been the standouts but Stokes Stokes he sort of made a real point with Alex Lees in the dressing room afterwards and just like Alex the way you went and played there that intent you showed that's what we want that's the best I've ever seen you play for England. So they're giving full clarity on how they want someone to play, which actually, if you look at it, at times we, when I was playing, we lived in a world where coaches were constantly saying, don't play that short. You know, if you look to leave, you know, just don't play outside off stump, just leave that ball. But when you do that, the best way, as we all know, to do it is to think positively about it, to look to score and then leave. And it's that sort of thing that they've been talking about. And the same with Johnny, who actually had played a big shot at Lords in the second innings. He came out playing, shot a ball. And he got out, sort of drove a couple, and then he went once more and he got bowled. Now, a lot of people would have actually said, what are you doing now? That was the last ball of his spell. Switch on. You know, why don't you think about that? Why did you do that? Don't do that again. Whereas actually what they did, they turned and said, the way you played there, that's what we're about. There's more of that. So... Whether they thought that was the right thing he did there or not, but actually, the next time, how much more confidence do you feel with that? And it's those things. And the same with the ball to Jimmy Brody. It's not being about, like, if we look to keep the scoreboard under control and we look to, you know, if we, if we don't let the batsman score, then we'll get wickets. Actually, what is very simple, their thing, is it's like we look to take wickets with the ball. And you have to, and Brendan sort of says everything better than me, but it's like you have to be malleable enough to change the plan when the team requires it, you know, and do what is what Ben's asking as the captain and what the team wants you to do. And they've loved it because actually it's like taking away some of the fear of going for a, a few runs. But you can still, with that, you can look, you look to take wickets, but you also still look to stop them scoring. It's just not your primary mm. objective. So you're giving everyone more options. And there's something in it for everyone. It does not mean that if you're a less, a less aggressive player that there's not a place for you in this team. No, 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 that's not the case. This might hopefully just bring more out of you because it's just freeing you where you're not living in this world of don't do this. It's very clear that there's um, an awful lot of enthusiasm from within you, which obviously transfers through to your lieutenants, and I use that term not as an insult, but um, and I think uh, whatever else you've done and, and you've transformed, I'm saying you, but there has been a transformation in, in, in the way test cricket has been played. It sent out a message, not only to England, but to the rest of the world about the way the game is played, and it's captured the imagination of the cricket watching and the sports watching public. That must gratify you. Yeah, I, I've loved that fact, but that's all down to Ben and the way that, and, and Brendan in particular, because it's little things to me. Sport is not just about winning. I know we sort of tell our kids and I get really annoyed when people sort of say, no, it's the taking part. No, no, I, I'm not saying that at all. But actually there is a style and a way. This is meant to be entertainment. You know, most people, aren't fortunate enough to be professional cricketers. Mm. They've got proper jobs, real lives, real struggles, and actually cricket's the thing they want to watch to get away from that. You know, it's the escape, and we're in a, well, they, these guys playing for England are in a privileged position to be able to try and entertain them. So when you go to Trent Bridge, and I wouldn't have done it, you know, because I don't, I, even I don't think like that, but what Brendan said at tea about on that last day about we're going, what they need, 160 or something? Yeah, I was in Holland. I was in Holland, it tonight. actually. Was that it? No, was it was the no. last day at Trent Bridge. Oh, was, the game was in the balance. Johnny Bairstow and Ben Stokes were in. 
and there were one, 160 needed. What's that? Probably six wickets left. And, mm -hmm. and at tea, most of us, as you would know, in a dressing room as a captain, we'd be like, let's just have a look here, lads. You know, yeah. let's just That's let's just right, yeah. see what's going on. Yeah. Whereas Brendan and Ben were like, we're winning this game, and if if I th and I don't know exactly, but. Brendan's like, I'll take responsibility. If we don't win this, I'll take responsibility. I don't care what any, you know, it, it's on me, whatever. We're going out to win this no matter what. You know, and that clarity, and then Johnny goes out and plays the way he did. Now, when you look back on that, with a packed house on the last day at Trent Bridge, the only thing that we couldn't have done there was, the only thing that was the wrong thing to do with hindsight was to block out for the draw. I think we would have got more respect and more... Um, more belief almost from the from the fans the crowds in the way that we went and played that game and the fact we gave it a go and if it didn't if it hadn't worked i still think people would have been proud actually of what they tried to do the fact we actually went and won it and johnny played that unbelievable innings and ben did it then sort of captured the imagination even more but that's what this is you know mm. you, you and i've done it mm. this is not life and death you know and yet we treat it at times in professional sport like it's like it's a proper job and it's not. It's like, Gert, this is the best time of your life as a 20-plus something. Make the most of it. Let's just take it down a level because the message is very clear, I think, um, that we now want and expect county cricket, red ball cricket, yeah. to follow and think about, or certainly think about and hopefully follow, the example that's been set in the last two or three months. Yeah. And let's not forget, we're doing this for Lancashire TV, so there's an awful lot of county supporters w yeah, watching yeah. this. Um, how is this going to impact on the counties and the, in terms of play? Yeah. But also, and we'll come on to this perhaps in a little bit more detail in a minute, um, about the impact that England has on county cricket. Let, do the first yeah. bit first about the way we play. And you've been, you have been, uh, I'm not sure critical is the right word, you, you have been realistic about in your comments about county cricket and the pitches we play on. And of course, being here at Emirates Old Trafford, we tend to, to look at this in shock and horror because yeah, yeah. we are pleased at, to have one of the best grounds in the world here. And the pitches are good and you would know. That. And if every county pitch was like this, I don't think you'd have a complaint. But so, so how, how, how is this going to transform English county cricket as well? How is it, how is it going to affect county cricket? Well, similar. I mean, that, that, again, because people would say, why is it important? Surely it's just important about winning. Yeah, OK. Why do you need a brand? Why do you need a style of play or whatever? But it's actually, it's like, well, if you look at what the white ball team did, <clears throat> it wasn't about winning the World Cup. What Owen Morgan did and Trevor Bayliss was that they changed the way a mentality as much as anything for our white ball game. And now you look at probably every county, every club, that way of playing has filtered down. So now we have so many batsmen coming through mm. that play in that method. You know, these young players, now you could argue it's an easier way to go about things in white ball cricket. It's not quite straightforward in test cricket, which is true. So you hope it has a knock-on effect that it inspires a few people to want to play the longest form and actually that there is a way that, it, you know, test cricket or the, the longer form of cricket does not mean you have to defend your wicket like it's your life is, is the thing. Whether it does, we'll wait and see, but you're absolutely right. Then the other part of that is other things that, it, it, it's not quite under me, but it's in my sort of remit, but it's something that I have an influence in, I'd like to think, is things like pitches. And to be fair, this year, the pitches have all seen better. Mm. And that's a big thing. And you're absolutely right. Here is probably one of the best, if not the best wickets in the country because of one thing, really. It's got pace and bounce. you know, And it's not with pace and bounce because it's left so much grass on it that it goes everywhere. And that, the reason why I think it's so important, because you, you find out who the best bowlers are, because you've got to be a proper bowler to bowl on that surface. If you're a spinner, you're going to get a bit out of it, but it's not going to be ridiculous. You're going to have to earn your time. And if you're a batsman, you're going to have to bat well to score runs on it. And that then, when you look at this year, where the wickets have been better, whether it's the ball or whatever have you, look at pots. Hmm. Oh, it's a good decision getting pots, and you know he plays with Stokes. So that's lucky. We've seen him. We've seen him for a while. 
Correct. You and I, we, you know, we've seen him play county cricket for three, four years. Correct. And yeah. we, he's sort of, he's been a, not a total standout, but he's somebody you, you tick. But also, because he's done it at a time when it's really tough to be a bowler, mm. this year when no one else was getting wickets, he's learned. All that means is you're, you know, to be successful, you, you, you have to be more accurate. You have to do something with the ball. You know, and that's then it's an easy selection because he's getting seven footers, and we've seen him. And the, Mo Bobat, who's uh, the performance director, has seen him from under nineteen cricket. So there's this whole pathway in place. And then, because he's played in the right conditions, his game leaps forward. And it's the same. There's been so many players like that. I mean, we picked the uh, the white ball squads. You got, I mean, like Gleeson. Mm. That's a, that's a, been miraculous the way he's come back into the game. He's hardly bowled a ball for two years. <laughs> know, and he bowls 90 mile, 93 mile an hour guns now. Well, I know, and then you must be frustrated as a well ex-director of cricket thing and I'll find we'd had him for two years. But yeah. it's that's the investment that you guys have put in that's now going to benefit English cricket, fingers crossed. Um, but that's, you know, he's learning <clears throat> in conditions that, you know, it's like when they played, that was great. He did it against India and that batting lineup. On those conditions, it's like, you know... You He's got himself about, an IPL contract now, hasn't he? <laughs> well, it'll be close anyway. But you know what I mean? Like, if you do that, you, you've got to feel... that that's You've got to feel 10 foot tall. I agree. Um, it's a good point you make about promoting players or, or uh, developing players to play international cricket. That is what counties are, are for, generally. Yeah. It's one of their... It should be one of their highest aims to, to produce the best quality cricketers that they can, can, can do. Uh, and that then obviously there's a natural progression from county cricket into the into the yeah. international. The biggest frustration that supporters and uh, counties have, I think, is that there appears to be or has appeared to be um, a lack of empathy with the counties from yeah. England. A particular case in point, the T20 competition that's just gone by, which is a good competition. Yep. And for my mind, should be promoted a little bit more than it is. But we had a great set of quarterfinals, semi-final, final. Yeah. All without the England players. There were one or two released. Yeah. Grant you that. But would that be a frustration for you that you can't release more? And is that something you might be looking to address? That that something again with the schedule this year that has been a frustration really because generally and what we've tried to do is release people as much as we can yeah. so throughout those quarterfinals it was I was constantly talking to the coaches who were very good as well we said we don't want people sitting on the bench which is a massive bonus this year from Covid times mm. when actually everyone they had to, to stay there yeah. you know and a lot of the time we're still people are still living in this Covid where you know with the way that people did things back then, businesses and stuff like that, by you don't have to keep people around. So what we've tried to do as much as we can is release people to play for their counties. You know, and the problem's been when there's been a game the next day or something. Mm -hmm. And to the point even where we've said to them, I say, right, okay, we've got three ODIs, for example, coming up. Do you think that you're going to play every bowler? Is it realistic that every seamer is going to play every game? And we'd say, generally, you say, well, no, there's a chance that one might need to be rested here or there. I said, right, OK, let's try and make it so that if you're going to rest, uh, rest, let's say, I think it might be David Willey at some point. He's got finals day on the Saturday. Let's, make, let's rest him for that Sunday so then he can go and do that. So we've tried as much as mm. we can to do that. And, that's, and what we're trying to do is make sure that in so many instances, the schedule's a schedule at the moment. That's something I've got to, it's not what, we necessarily do but you'll have an influence over it though. well you hope so yes going forward yeah and and this year has been particularly tough because we had that india test match that was a makeup test from this one we've got to go to holland because we didn't go during covid time so you hope that we can get that better in the future but generally you know we, we sort of have tried as much as we can and what we want to do actually and we're trying to do is when we have the conversations about the various players, whether it's centrally contracted ones, which Lancashire have a lot, what we're trying to do is actually work with the counties. So actually to sit round together with Chile, Chappie, um, the SNCs, the physios, the people on our side and actually say, well, what do we all think is best for this player? Mm. You know, what do we all think is best for Joss Butler or whoever, yeah. Liam Livingston, whoever it is? 
and then come up with something that works so that we can give some ownership back to the counties to say, you know, you guys, you pr producing these players, keep going with it. How can we help rather than us telling you what to do all the time? That's really good. Uh, and, and, uh, and what I would have hoped you would do and, and expect from you. Um, let's just a little, talk a little bit about the structure. There's going to be a review or there is an ongoing review. The structure is a thing that frustrates um, not only players and administrators and probably you and me, but it also uh, member supporters. Um, would, you, uh, would you consider, and are you considering reducing the number of county games, which I think would be a good thing, um, uh, and reducing the Red Bull games perhaps to a division of 12 and, and 6 and have 11 games in the first division and then for the for the white ball T20 just reduce that a little bit and 50 over and that may be your most contentious area um, given one or two comments that have been passed over the last couple of weeks Wazim Akram said it's probably on the on its way out we all thought about that actually in 2015 when uh, the, the competition was in Australia and Brendan McCollum no less resurrected the way to play 50 over cricket so no, we're going back a bit now seven years anyway so in terms of the domestic structure it, in for me it has to change and it has to be streamlined and there has to be more time made now you can't make time so what you do you take take games out of it to create time or have I answered your question? No, no, I, I think question, right? <laughs> you've yeah. answered your own question. No, yeah. what it is, is, there's two things. that The, the high performance review is, it is not a, just a domestic structure review. And at the moment where there's lots of that you've got, uh, you've got the first class county's chairman, you've got the CEOs, you've got various different groups that are all sort of getting, we're canvassing opinions really to try and work out what everyone who's got a stake in the game really thinks the best thing to do is so we're not at the point where we're saying you're going to reduce games going to have more games, less games or anything we're at the point now where we're trying to because what we want to really do is take the game with us with this rather than actually just do it to the game just say right this is what's happening this is what you're going to do so whether it is less games more games whether it's whatever that part is what's being thrown around at the moment trying to work out the best way along with so much of what is high performance? How can we help to make more pitches like Old Trafford? How can you help under 19 cricket? All these things are getting thrown into the mix. And at some point over the next month or two, we'll start firming up some ideas. But lots of suggestions are in the melting pot at the moment. And I, and I genuinely, I'm not trying to hide anything. I couldn't tell you if it's going to, how it's going to end up. There's lots of different ideas. But as you know as well, it's incredibly tough to work out exactly the best way for everyone. Um, but I also think there's part of it that's got to be how can English, how can the England team and the England setup help county cricket as well, not actually it's county cricket's job to help us all the time. Um, so I don't know where that's going to end up at the moment, but that's all, all the things you've spoken about are in the melting pot. Uh, let's just move on quickly to, to, to white ball cricket. You, you've had a, uh, a wonderful I can't say honeymoon period, that's rubbish. <laughs> but you've had a great start to your red yeah. ball uh, performances. White ball's been difficult and yeah. is, is probably destined to get a little bit more difficult before it gets better because you've got new personnel in. in yeah. Matthew Mott's come in, he's lost his captain, you've lost your talismanic all-rounder in Ben Stokes. Yeah. So it's an interesting one for you because you were obviously charged or you thought that red ball cricket would be the easy one and the <laughs> white ball will just take care of itself mm -mm, ain't, <laughs> ain't working that way at the moment is it no uh, but the one thing i would say about that is, is that one I, I i didn't know that owen morgan was going to but morgan's never gave me a guarantee that he was going to do no. it and i always felt that he would do what he felt was right not for him for english cricket actually so you know, Joss has come in, who I think is an outstanding captain, and from dealing with him, he's been fantastic. They've just played against a very, very good side in India, mm -hmm. where the ball did actually more than they were expecting. You know, it, the injuries to our bowlers hasn't hit us in Test cricket at all because we've got Anderson Broad and then Potts has come about, so we've not really felt it at all. And I, we felt it a bit more in white ball cricket, and the batsmen haven't quite been at their best and a lot of that could have been down the pitch at the oval had a bit more in it all those things you know there's probably lots of different factors but when I look at teams 
What concerns me more is when you don't have the resource, i.e. you don't have the cattle, you don't have the players. But I look at our batting lineup at Bearstow, you know, you've got Bearstow, Roy, Joe Root, whoever these people are, Josh Butler, Liam Livingston, Salt. There's all these guys. You've got Brooke knocking around. You've got so many to pick choose from. They'll find form at some point. So I'm quite pleased. I'd much rather we'd played against like a team like that Indian team uh, and we'd have seen the Gleasons and the people and Chris Jordan bowled well, Topley bowled well. We started to find out about people properly against a good side rather than playing someone or a team that were nowhere near as good as us and we just blitzed through them and we wouldn't learn anything. So I've been quite pleased actually that we've that we're in this period of play. And I also think, you know, people forget, you know, Joss, Matthew Mott, you're quite right. It's gonna take them a little bit of time to find, make it their team and find their rhythm. People forget, you know, Moore's captain England in the World Cup in 2015 as well. And it took him a little while to find his voice and the way that he wanted people to go about it. I think Joss will find that quickly. Um, and it won't take long before they start, you know, they start taking it to another level. Um, there's two seriously good people there with Joss and Matthew Mott. Um, so I'm actually, you know, I think we're in a better place in white ball cricket now than we were at the start of this competition because of some of these bowlers coming through. You know, and then you add to that into the mix, like you've got Wokes, Archer, Wood, all these guys, and you think, hang up, you know, this is looking pretty good. We've got more you, options now than we did. You've mentioned about 20 players there. Uh, which brings me to my next point, selection. Yeah. Because you haven't, um, I want to say I haven't addressed it, you probably haven't needed to so far, but there is going to come a point where you're going to have to think about how you structure your selection yeah. and who is going to do that and what sort of format it's going to take, how many people, etc. Yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you, in, you basically in charge of that at the moment, doing it, doing it off your own bat? Yeah, so I'm effectively the head selector. And what we do is with each team at the moment, so you've got Ben, Brendan, myself as the vote, as it were. Because what I like, I can't bear wasting time. Mm. So it's like if you all sit around and go, I want him, I want him, I want him. And you go, OK, we've all debated this long enough. Who you having? Who you having? Who you having? Vote's done. Then we move on. And there's been times, actually, where we haven't always agreed. Yeah. And it's worked. It works well. And then you have, you see, what? where I'm very lucky and I couldn't do this job the performance director, who's been there for a while, actually, uh, who's Mo, been Mo Boba. Mo Boba, who's an unsung hero, actually, yeah, yeah. of English cricket, who has done so much work behind the scenes, never really got any credit for it, from right back to working with Straussy when he when they set up this plan for England in white ball cricket, all of that. And Mo's fantastic, and he's on that panel. David Court as well, who's in charge of player ID. You've got a whole scouting network of people. I've got a good... You know, whether it's like contacts booking my phone, you know, I can speak to people, whether it's you, whether it's yeah, Bumble, yeah. whether it's um, Athnas, anyone around. I can speak to players about, yeah. you know, that I still know and say, yeah, what's it like facing pots? So we've got this huge network of people. So it's not about like a head selector. It's someone who's going to actually facilitate that process, deal with the media, all those things. Because, you know, if I want to know about pathway cricket or the next best coming through, Mo, David Court, that, You've got people every around. scout. They have, people around you. We've got great people, which I think is leadership, actually. One thing I think I've got a bit, I don't know how to really do emails properly. I don't know how to do <laughs> a lot of stuff. But what I do think, I'd like to think I'm a decent judge of character and a person. And I just make sure I've got good people around me that, that can challenge me and make good decisions. And Mo certainly been brilliant. The two of us have worked very well together. And that's really helped me. And a lot of the decisions have, have been joint in that regard. So, so the head selector or selector, however we slice it up, you know, is about the person that fits into that group. You know, the person that can help facilitate that to be present at county games, to, you know, make sure that they're on tour at times, you know. So, so you're just keeping the process in check when I can't necessarily. Mm. So... I can't tell you exactly where I'm at with it. We need someone, whether it's what, where exactly they fit into that is a different thing. All in the fullness of time. Um, just to, just to, to wrap this up, it's not quite obvious from the way we've talked and the, the time we've taken, which time has flown, <laughs> um, that you're hugely enthusiastic about English cricket, international cricket in all its forms, developmental cricket. 
How important is county cricket to you, the county system and the counties that provide all these players? Well, you see people at times, when I was working for Sky, probably because I had to go up pitches or stuff like that, felt I was, if I was Andrew, but actually this is where I'm from. I know more about, or I've got more of an affili affiliation to county cricket than a lot of people. I didn't play a huge amount of international cricket, but I also see the potential for county cricket. When I got into this job, you know, and people, I said, I, I, you know, I remember people asking me about, well, will you be able to do this? Will you be able to do that? I said, I'm not, I'm not, I've got a downer on English cricket like a lot, it seems like a lot of people. I'm so optimistic about things. I look at the players that are coming through the county system. You know, as I said, there's so many good players coming through. I think it's hugely important, you know, because without that, you, you haven't got an England team, really. Um, so I'm incredibly optimistic, incredi incredibly positive about county cricket and what it can provide. Well, I think after this chat, there'll be an awful lot of people in the cricketing world hoping that you'll safeguard, do as much as you can to safeguard the, the county yeah. county cricket structure. Well, the structure will change, but the county, county cricket yeah. Uh, players. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that generally, you know, we're, we're that close in English cricket to having everything, to being really good at test cricket, to be really good at white ball cricket as well, you know, and we're not far away. A little change of mentality here and there, and we, we're getting one step closer. And there's going to be a, you know, a real rocky road ahead at times, I'd imagine, with this England team. And, you know, it's not always going to be where they're winning and stuff like that. But as long as we keep that mentality right throughout English cricket, I think we've got a good chance. Rob, thanks very much. You've started brilliantly as uh, Managing Director of Men's Cricket. Let's hope it continues for, for many, many years to come. Thanks for being here at Emirates Old Trafford. Cheers, Will.